The kingdom of God is here. Jesus is the one who brings the kingdom of God. And sometimes he can bring the kingdom of God directly to you or he can use his disciples and working through them bring the kingdom of God to you. Remember when before Jesus would heal people, he would say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand. And I'm telling you, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. You see, Jesus brings his kingdom every time he delivers people from the power of sin. Sin is from the kingdom of darkness where Satan operates. He's the ruler of that king. It's not a competition between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. Certainly not. Absolutely not. The kingdom of darkness operates illegally because Jesus has already defeated him on the cross. The kingdom of darkness operates illegally everywhere the kingdom of God is yet to come. This is why the enemy likes to lie to people, deceive people, causing them to believe something that is not true, such as... Um, God doesn't love you. You will always be sick. You can never fully stop sinning. Because he knows once you believe his lies, you will start to, and, and those lies come into your heart, and the Bible says out of your heart flow the issues of life. You will start to speak those lies, think lo those lies, and your lifestyle will be about those lies. And that's how he um, establishes his, his uh, kingdom. If he can get you to continue sinning, then you're operating from the, the, the kingdom of darkness is an operation in your life. Jesus brings his kingdom when he releases people from the power of sin. So to hear a Christian say, but we're only human, we can't stop sinning. That's just not biblical. Scripture says we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, but that's why God needed to send a savior, Jesus Christ, to save us from the power of darkness. Sin is the power of darkness. So you can't be a Christian, Christ-centered, spirit-led, and still be operating from the dominion of darkness, still be operating in sin. And by allowing the enemy to deceive you, then you will still be operating in sin, although freedom is already yours, okay? The kingdom of God is here. Just receive it. Receive Jesus into your heart. That's the first step. He will give you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, one of the many jobs of the Holy Spirit, is to take you by the hand and lead you into all truth. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is coming, who will lead you into all truth. Notice, he won't pull you, he won't push you, he won't force you. He will lead you into all truth. What is this truth? Jesus says, I am the truth. So the Holy Spirit will come into you after you receive Jesus Christ and lead you into walking a life that is in the image of God, a life that is the truth. A life with no lies, a life without sin, a life of holiness. When we start living in this manner, in the way Jesus instructed us to live, that is how we destroy the kingdom of darkness in, in, uh, in our lives, in the lives of other people and so on and so forth. You see, Jesus brings his kingdom when he releases people from the power of sin and death. From, from the power of sin. So what Jesus is doing is he is destroying the kingdom of darkness in your life, in my life, in people's lives by taking away their sins, giving them the Holy Spirit who will lead them into all truth, who will lead them into living a life without sin, So the kingdom of darkness will have absolutely no say, no power in that person's life. That's how this Jesus destroys the kingdom of darkness in our lives. That's how he releases us from the, from the, from the powers of darkness. You see, when Jesus went to the cross 2,000 years ago at Calvary, he crucified the powers of darkness. He destroyed them. Colossians 2.15 says, have, it's talking about Jesus, having disarmed, so he disarmed he took away their weapons. He disarmed them, the powers of darkness. Having disarmed principalities and power, he made a public spectacle of, of them, triumphing over them on the cross. So he made a public spectacle because there were many witnesses, many viewers there, and he, tri he, tri he triumphed over them on the cross. He defeated them on the cross. So although it's already done, 
2,000 years ago at Calvary, when we receive Jesus, what he did on the cross becomes alive in us. It starts, starts to um, um, be active in us. He gives us the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. Who Jesus, to, uh, uh, to walk in the image of Jesus, to live holy, to walk in his ways, for him to be our continuous um, awareness and so on and so forth. But God has also given us free will to say, I'm a bit lazy to read my Bible. I'm a little bit lazy to pray. I'm a little bit lazy to commune with God. I'm a little bit lazy to sit in the presence of God. Let me just waste five hours on Netflix. Let me just waste three hours at the local coffee shop. Let me just do this. Let me just do that. Let me just cook. Let me just answer my emails. Let me just go over here. And, and, and God is nowhere in the picture. So although what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago is legit, it's here. The kingdom of God is here right now. You choose to either reject Jesus fully and say, I don't want him as my savior. So then he will never come and live in you. And therefore what he did on the cross will never activate, become alive in you. Or you could be the kind of Christian that says, I received Jesus Christ into my heart. He's given me the Holy Spirit. But, you know, I'm a bit of a wicked and lazy servant. Um, I like Jesus, but I still want to follow in the ways of this world. There's still things of this world, things of darkness that you're attracted to. There's still demonic things that attract you. Like it could be drugs, alcohol, fornication, masturbation, porno, sin, sin. And sin is proof that the kingdom of darkness is still somehow, somewhere in operation in your life. And you can never experience the fullness of the kingdom of God as long as darkness is still in operation in your life. You could be like some Christians where you love Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, you walk in the ways that Jesus commanded, but you still have some hidden sin. Well, that hidden sin is still the kingdom of darkness in operation a little bit in your life. Although you've been delivered from the dominion of darkness, Colossians 1.13, for God has delivered you from the dominion of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of his beloved son. So although you are no longer under, you are no longer in that bondage in, uh, under his, his authority because God has delivered you and you're in the kingdom of God, there are still some things of darkness that you haven't let go of fully. And until you let go fully, you will never fully experience the uh, kingdom of God fully. You can experience the kingdom of God partially because of the attachments that are holding you here. But it will never be fully until you fully let go of the things of darkness. And the things of darkness are, are sin. Okay? So, we destroy the kingdom of darkness by turning away from sin completely and the only way we're going to turn away from sin completely is through jesus christ alone he's the one that crucified sin all right and and and, and then we go and turn and free other people from the dominion of darkness by turning them away from sin and bringing them to a holy life you see as christians bible says the bible says we are priests and kings ministering to God well we are a priesthood priests are supposed to live holy we're supposed to be living holy that's the truth of the matter healing and deliverance is also associated with the coming of the kingdom of God sin is of the kingdom of darkness the consequences of sin which is human suffering is of the kingdom of darkness Human suffering can show up as sickness, disease, demonic bondages, witchcraft, things of this nature. Consequences of sin. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have sin. It could be a generational thing. Like when you see cancer coming down from one generation to the next. Alcohol addiction coming down from one generation to the next. And it continues until Jesus Christ comes in and stops that. <clears throat> so these are the things of uh, uh, darkness. The, the, from the, of the kingdom of darkness. The things of God's kingdom is full good health full freedom love joy peace kindness goodness gentleness there is no sickness in the kingdom of god sickness is from the kingdom of darkness 
There is no demonic bondages in the kingdom of Lord God. That's from the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of God is full freedom. Full good health, not partial, not 50%, 80%, 100%, 100%. So when I say that healing and deliverance is associated with the coming of the kingdom of God, remember Jesus would go to a sick person and say, the kingdom of God has come near you. And he would lay hands on the sick and they would be healed. That's because it was um, an encounter of two kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. It's not a battle between the two. Who will win? Who is the strongest? It's not a battle. That's not the case at all. Everywhere Jesus appears, Satan becomes paralyzed. He has to flee. He has no power whatsoever to fight with Jesus Christ. Okay? When Jesus appears... When the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of darkness has no power. But God has chosen to work through people. This is why it is the job of the church to go out there and set the captives free. It is the job of the church, the body of Christ, the believer, the Christian. It is their job because God chooses to work through people. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, you will see God's chosen most common way of destroying the works of darkness and setting people free is by working through his chosen people, his chosen vessels. So it's an encounter of two kingdoms. There's no competition. Victory is already the Lord's. So if it's an encounter of two kingdoms, here is the, the kingdom of darkness is in operation, and that's why sickness is in that body. And here the kingdom of God, where it's full freedom, full healing. And so Jesus would say, be healed. And so on the physical realm, on the natural realm here, what we see, what we can touch, it looks like a sick body. Jesus is going to them, touching them, and miraculously they're being healed. And that is what is happening on the natural realm. But on the spiritual realm, on the realm that is unseen, what is happening in essence, it's an encounter of two uh, invisible kingdoms, kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. And it's literally a spiritual battle there. And Jesus commands, who be, Jesus being the ruler of his kingdom, commands the ruler of the dark kingdom, Satan, let them go. And Satan releases. Because it's not a battle between the two. Victory is already the Lord's. Jesus is already the one with all power and all authority over Satan and his kingdom and his demons and his darkness and everything. Scripture tells us Jesus Christ is seated in the heavenly places with God the Father, high, high above principalities, above power, above every name, above dominions. He's far above everything. Okay? So on the spiritual realm, what is happening? It's an encounter of these two kingdoms. And Jesus, either directly or through his disciple, when we say sometimes, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Or in the name of Jesus, come out unclean spirit. It's an encounter of two kingdoms. And this is why we say in the name of Jesus. Because demons and the forces of darkness don't bow down to us. They bow down to the Jesus in us. So it's an encounter of these two kingdoms. And when, the, when Jesus appears, when the kingdom of God appears, the kingdom of darkness gets destroyed. Satan has to go. It's not a matter of Satan standing here and saying, no, I'm going to fight to keep my ground. The ground has already been removed from under his feet when Jesus Christ went to the cross 2,000 years ago at Calvary. It's done. It's finished. This is why Jesus said it is finished. Okay. So these two kingdoms, healing and deliverance is associated with the coming of the kingdom. When you see the sick body being healed, that's because God's kingdom has come to that place. This is why Jesus would heal them and say, the kingdom of God has come near you. Casting out the demons, that's, the, that's proof that the kingdom of God has come. And the kingdom of darkness was defeated in that person's life. Now, Jesus heals us and delivers us. Let's do our part to maintain our freedom, to maintain our deliverance. And we do that by drawing closer to God, resisting the devil so that he can flee. We do that by living a life that is holy. We destroy the works of darkness in our lives by turning away from sin to a life of holiness. And this is why the devil tries so hard to convince you 
that you're only human, of course you're going to sin. Because the second you believe that and you start living that, that's an open door for the kingdom of darkness to continue operating in your life. But it's a big fat lie. Scripture says the devil is a liar, the father of lies. He's been lying from the beginning. Because scripture says something different. He who is in Christ does not sin. It says, be holy like your father is holy. Be holy like your father is, is holy. So you, in your life, you disarm. In other words, you strip the enemies of their weapons by staying away from sin. This is why they try, the enemy tries so hard to get you to sin. That's what he wants. He wants you to sin. Because when you sin, you give him power. When you refuse sin, you have the power over him. But this is where it gets even more interesting. This power to refuse the devil and his lies and his sins and his demons is not our power or our might. It is the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. All right. This is why the Bible says, draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. I think it's James 4, 7, James 4, 8, something like that. Or James 7, 4, James 8, 4, right? Anyway, look it up. Draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Why in this order, draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee? Because we need to be near God. If we are going to have the power to resist the devil. Because it's not by our power we resist the devil. It is by the power of God that we resist the devil. And so therefore we must first draw near to God. Before we can resist the devil. Before he can flee. It's all God. It's all God. And so to say something foolish like. I would like to sit in the presence of God but I'm busy. It is just, it's just foolishness to my ears. And ignorance and spiritual immaturity because you do not know just how much power of God's power you are missing out on when you're not spending time in his presence in his word communing with him in prayer and that's why when time of temptation comes you fall into sin because you never you were never close to God you never you're, you you weren't you were not drawing from him because instead of sitting in his presence and communing with him and feeding your your spirit man with the spiritual word of God you're out and about in the world doing other things and so when time of temptation comes you try to overcome the temptation with your power and that's a lost case it's always a lost case if we could stop sin by our own there will be no need for God to send his son as a savior. So that's proof that we cannot do it by ourselves. And that's why God had to send his son. Because it is through his power in us where we can resist the devil. And his lies and his schemes and his attacks and everything. And so we need to draw near to God. We need to be in the word of God. Scripture says meditate on the word of God day and night. We need to be praying. Scripture says pray without ceasing. We need to be in communion with him. We don't just jump into prayer, ask for what we want, thank him for the, and quickly out. What, you prayed, you spoke, but there was no communion. There was no communion there. There was no relationship there. It was more like a visitation place like a hotel I visit and I exit when I feel like it I enter and I leave when I want if I need something or just to cross it off my to-do list just to say I've done it so I don't feel guilty or something like that and that's why this you, you don't have power and that's why the, the the kingdom of darkness is still in operation in your life somewhere sin is the work of the devil so to say I'm a Christian but you know you can't really stop falling sin it's, you can't stop 
seen him fully because you're only human. That's not biblical. That's a lie from the pits of hell. It comes directly from Satan. Because as children of God, we are commanded to live holy, righteous. Why do you think we need the breastplate of righteousness found in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18? Why do you think we need the breastplate of righteousness? What does a breastplate protect? The heart. All organs around the heart, but mainly the heart. So righteousness needs to be, you need the spiritual breastplate of righteousness to protect your heart from unrighteousness. If we're only human, and of course we would be living in sin, why would you need to protect your heart from unrighteousness? So God is telling you, the only thing that must be in your heart is righteousness. Why? Because out of your heart flow the issues of life. If God was okay with having a little bit of unrighteousness in your heart, when it's time for out of your heart to flow the issues of life, that's what will flow, unrighteousness. Well, unrighteousness is not holy living. This is why, and God wants holy living. This is why we need to protect God your heart with all diligence because out of it flow the issues of life and be careful because the heart is deceitful above all things the devil would love to put so many things in your heart to deceive you that that's okay that that's good but we're, we're only human we can't stop sinning guard your heart with all diligence stop accepting demonic reasonings that are just not of god they're opposing god Get in your Bible and know the word of God for yourself. Because the enemy is targeting your mind. And the enemy is targeting your heart. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. And the only way you're going to do that is through Jesus Christ himself. The full spiritual armor is Jesus Christ himself. The belt of truth is Jesus. He is the truth. The breastplate of righteousness is Jesus. He's the prince of the king of righteousness. The, your feet fitted in peace is Jesus. He is the prince of peace. The helmet of salvation in G is Jesus. Salvation is found only in him. The shield of faith is Jesus. But he is faithful and true. His name is faithful and true. You don't have to remember every single armor piece if that's too difficult. Just remember Christ. Clothe yourself in Christ. Clothe yourself like a, a, like a cloak. Cover yourself in Christ. The enemy will come in to attack your mind, your heart, but he can't. He won't be able to touch you because every part of you is covered in Christ. So you need to be in Christ. Stop wasting time here, there, Netflix, scrolling through social media, this, that, or the other. Wasting time, doing this, doing that. Stop wasting your time. You are wasting your life. Your life is being wasted and the enemy wants nothing more than for you to waste your life. Get into the spiritual things of God. Ask God to open your spiritual eyes, to purify your heart, to cleanse you. To put, make you hunger for him. Get in the word of God. Get in his presence. Get into prayer. Commune with him. Delight to do his will. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself.